does size really matter? Limitation of short stamps. I will show you my experience, which is a bit different from Hubert ones. These are my disclosures. Take care of this because one of the stamps that I will present the study is coming from one of these companies. We have to agree with this instructional review published on BJJ that the length of contemporary stamps has been based on intuition and historical developments rather than scientific evidence, and this is definitely true. I have been using, in my experience, since many years, both cementless and cemented, well-documented standard stamps, and they are still 80-90% of my practice. But our patients are changing. We are heard about young patients. This is data from my department. You see the patient younger than 40. The average age is the same along the time. But when you look at the percentage of people younger than 40, they are increasing, and I expect that in 2020, they will be more. And they want to go to sport. More than 90% restart re, re to do sports, even against our suggestion, doing sometimes crazy things that we do not suggest to them. But this cohort of patients have the high risk of revision. This is objective data from registry, and you can see that over the age of 55, you have the highest risk of revision after 15 years. So these are all good reasons for considering bone preserving stems, able to transmit the load to the proximal femur, to avoid stress shielding and possibly tie pain. But we also have to recognize that there is a huge lack of data about short stems. There are low quality of currently available evidence. Despite favorable medium-term revision rate, there is a lack of long-term studies. There is a high prevalence of stems misalignment incorrect sizing, subsidence, intraoperative fractures reported in the literature. And there are some limitations that we have just seen. More neck is preserved, more difficulties in correcting deformities of the proximal femur. Major problems in controlling length, length, offset, and antiversion when you preserve the neck, of course. And one more thing. This is a study from Australian Registry. And they were able to demonstrate that when you introduce something new in your practice, and this is about stems, there are 11. None of them were the same. Two were worse. No one of them were better to the previous ones. But we have also to know that there are some more recent analyses, and they report, this is again, this is a systematic review from BJJ, that short stems, femoral stems, implants, show similar improvement in clinical and radiological outcomes compared with conventional length implants. But we, again, we have only mid-term survivorship, however, is no. So they claim for caution in the introduction of short stems and new devices in your practice. Nevertheless, we have seen this type of stem. You see, this lady was revised because of an ASR metal on metal problem. There, this is a failure of the revision, so this is a loosening of the cap after the revision. And you see, six years after the cap revision and 13 years, this short stem is still in situ. And this stem was retired from the market, as you know. But nevertheless, whatever is the length of the stem, we need some fundamental feature by our stems and our surgical technique, which is a reliable primary stability, also integration capability and durable secondary fixation, Transmission of the load to the proximal femur when possible, and preserving the bone stock, of course. And there are some other needs in a modern stem from my point of view. They should be possible suitable for different approaches. We have seen that there are getting more and more uh, different approaches, and they should be at least suitable for different ones. And with the simple and reproducible surgical technique, which is a key point, because it should work in all the hands. And of course, the clinical results of a new or a short stem in the terms of survival should be at least not inferior to the previous one, especially in the young, that they need a long-lasting implant. So I was proposed some years ago, when I was a bit suspicious and not a fan at all about short stem, to do a clinical trial. And this is what I learned. I work on this metaphysical short stem, the clinical study for introduction it. It's a taper with trapezoidal cross-section with high rotational stability in the proximal part. The load is aimed to be transferred in the proximal fever, what we want from a short stem, with high roughness in the upper part for this reason. We have already seen this classification. It is part of the trochanter sparing. 
So it's not column, it's not trochanter harmony, it's trochanter sparing. And we know that trochanter sparing, together with the partial column, are reported in literature with the best results. My indication since the beginning, and we, I don't change with my practice. Young patients, less than 70, not very young, but younger than this, we use cemented stems over this age, good bone quality, following the pre plan which is the most important thing for me. Look at this guy, this is extremely active, doing some crazy sports even. He was operated on one side, on the other side it fits very well, it's easier because it already worked on the other side. And this is a four and five years follow up of bilateral ceramic con ceramic. There are some relative indications also in my practice. This patient has a complex subtrochanteric uh, deformity due to trauma in the, in the young age. It was extremely successful by me the year before with this CLS on the other side. But now you cannot use a standard stem of this stem, otherwise you have to correct the stem. So you have two choices. Do an osteotomy down there, which is at risk, you know, in this area, or to do it this. There is some tolerance of virus, and this is one year follow-up. But there is, which is much more important, contraindication in my practice. The osteoporotic bone. Previous surgery, for me, is an indication in the uh, osteotomy fixation in the proximal part. We want to aim in an area. If this area is affected, I don't like to put the stem there. And major, non minor, but major deformities of the proximal femur for the same reason DDH, skiffy, and so on. There are some limitations. This is main, my main topic. Extreme valgus neck with high hip center. You cannot put the stem in the neck. Of course, every type of stem is a problem to be put in this. Femur, but if you go with the short, it's extremely dangerous for the patient. And also, from my experience, extreme sizes. I show what I mean you. This guy has a large canal. We go with the pro plan. We see this is the biggest size of this short stem. This is not short. This is huge. That's not what we want to have a distal fixation with the big stem. So we go with the standard Weimuller type stem. Or this is came from the experience. This is a short, fat, typical south of Italy woman. If you go with this short stem, you have in the pro a lengthening, which is inevitable because you cannot do the osteotomy at the level of the lesser trochanter with this type of short stem. So this simply means that if this is the small size, this is not for this lady. So we went to a standard CLS type stem. We did this observational study on 80 hips. We started in 2013. Uh, 42 patients complete their five years follow-up. These are the demographics. We had, you know, you can see quite young age, 54. We didn't take care about the BMI because this, the stem must be stable, so this was not a limitation. More males in this type of patient, usually active with the, a normal or even intensive activity. This is the diagnosis, as I showed you, mainly primary arthritis, but also a big group of osteonecrosis that works very well in this type of cases. And the results. No major complication in this cohort, no infection, no dislocation, no loosening, no perioprosthetic fracture, intra and post-op. Two reoperations in the whole cohort. One patient was reoperated somewhere else. We got it from the interview. It was removed by a terotopic ossification. The liner and the head were replaced. Four years after surgery, the stem is still in situ. And this is our reoperation, one year and a half after the surgery. The patient was complaining about growing pain. It was an active male. There was some, I can tell, some squeaking, which is quite strange in our cases. The patient was complaining. This was a new device for us, so we went and revised it. The stem was extremely stable. We just do this uh, reshaping of the anterior neck. I don't know if this is a real impingement, but after the reshaping, the change up to uh, cross limb ceramic on cross limb poly and the tenotomy of the iliosos, it worked. The RSI score improved very rapidly because you, you want to have a rapid improve. It means that the stem is stable since the beginning. There was an improvement also in all the problems, this EU CLA, both in pain, walking, and activity, and in the WHO score, in all the sub-score, symptoms, pain, functional daily activity, functional sports, and quality of life. Radiographic evaluation. We have not a small amount of what we judge undersized. Look at this case. This is clearly undersized, but this is a five years post-op, no reaction on the periosteum. Probably it took some fixation, you can see, in the lateral side on the cortex, and it is fine, even if radiographically undersized. Some virus positioning, this type of stem tolerates some virus positioning. I don't like it, but it can be tolerated. And then we had some radiolucent line in zone 
three, four, five, I will show you, some minor atrophy, but what I'm more concerned about is the cortical hypertrophy that I will show you. This is the uh, uh, um, radiolucent lines in zone three, four, five. This is fine for me. I want a proximal fixation, not a distal one. So I'm not uh, a concern if there is no distal osteointegration. integration. I like this a bit less. Even if the patient is asymptomatic, this means that there is some transfer load distally. So this is not fine for this type of stem. Probably something was wrong with the size, with the technique, or mainly with the indication. But we know that this type of reaction in this type of design of stem can have no clinical value and no clinical relevance. But I'm not happy at all. Finally, this is a sportsman. He plays basketball. You can see he was 37 at the time of surgery. Uh, 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 he's not a professional, of course, but he still does uh, this sport activity. You can see the short time with the ceramic on ceramic, 36 millimeter head. In conclusion, more than the size, primary stability, and transmit of the load to the proximal femur matter for me, correct indication, patient selection, and surgical technique are the key points together with the stepwise introduction of implants in your own practice and in the market. Partial column and trochanter spelling have shown good mid-term results, but longer follow-up is required. Thank you very much for your attention.